Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In the next installment of our Android introduction screencast, we're going to look at events that are generated by the user interface. So this is a typical pattern when we're designing interactive applications. The user does something, like they push a button, or they enter information into a text box or something, something changes. There's something that the user does, and the activity or the application needs to respond to that. So there's um, two steps to this. So the first thing we have to do, and you see this going on you know, in the onCreate method that's called when the activity comes into the foreground, is that we set handlers for various events. So let's walk through this step by step. The first thing that needs to happen is we need to have something for the user to interact with. And so in this case, you'll see that our app has already set up uh, positioned in the UI several different buttons. So let me show you how this works just quickly. So I'm going to open up the uh, activity layout view. I'm going to close some of these other windows to make it a little bit larger. And you'll see that right here I have a button and I've configured the icon for that button. But the most important thing I want to show you here is that each element in the UID has a, U sorry, each element in the user interface has an ID. This is a, has to be a unique value that identifies that component of the user interface to the activity. So this is a button that has the ID called open file. And I've chosen that ID on purpose because it reflects something about what that button's going to do. All right, so let's go back to our activity and open up our project view again. Well, we don't really need that. So, okay, so now when my app launches, one of the things it's going to do, two steps. The first thing is it finds this element in the UI and it does this by using this key. So this says, find me the element in my current layout that has an ID of open file. So find view by ID. And what this reserve returns is this particular type of UI element in Android called an image button. It's a button that has a background image. You can also create a button that has text. There's other kinds of buttons. Next, what we do is we say, we set up what's called a handler. What this is, is a function that's going to run every time the button is clicked. So in this case, we're going to log a message when the button is clicked. And let's just do that for now. I'm going to remove the call to this function. So let's run our Android emulator. I'm going to open up the log cat view here so we can see what's happening. My Gradle build is running slow as always. Let's see if that's popped up yet. Nope, we're still waiting. So when my Gradle build finishes, the app's going to launch. What I'm going to show you is that every time the button in the UI is clicked, this particular function is going to run. All this function does right now is log a message. OK, so we see our normal logging output that's part of our create handler. And now every time I click this button, there is this message that's generated. At this point, the app doesn't do anything else. It just generates this message. But normally, when you click a button, you want something to happen. And so what we've done is each one of our buttons in the UI runs a particular function that's defined as part of the activity. So in this case, um, if I open up the structure view, we're going to run the function called start open file. And this is actually fairly simple. Um, and this is not something that I'm going to explain in the screencast, but all this does is it launches a file open dialog that's going to allow you to open image files. So now that I've modified this again, let me uh, modify the UI, sorry, modify the application, rebuild my app, and show what happens now that I use this button. Okay, so. The app is relaunched, and now when I hit the button, I've opened this file dialog, and you can see that it's configured to uh, take me to a directory where I have images. Um, I can still, this button sometimes is not particularly responsive, but you know I can select different images in this view. I should be able to get, uh, if it'll let me clip, click up here, I should be able to get to different you know, panes, maybe not. 
Um, but you know, I can select different files that I want to open, right? So let's say that I'm gonna, it looks like my, there we go, okay. So let's do this again. Let's see if this will let me do this this time. No, it's really stuck here. Um, sometimes these touch targets are really small when you're using the emulator, so you really have to be a little bit patient with it. So in this case, I can, you know, I'm, I'm interacting with the open file time. Okay, so let's, you know, just briefly look at the other buttons. So I've set up a handler for the take photo button that initiates a, uh, the process of taking a picture with the webcam. There's a download uh, dialog that I can open. There's a rotation left, and then there's the process image button, which is actually what sends the image to the Microsoft Cognitive Services API for processing. You'll see that the rotate left button does what I expect. Um, that's calling this function. I don't know why it says structure is empty. Uh, that's why that's calling this function called rotate left. And each one of these handlers has been set up to map to a specific function. So this is a very common pattern. This is you know very frequently how an app starts executing a particular piece of code because the user said I want to rotate the image left. I start a function called rotate left, that function and these other functions launch some work, and then normally what happens is that there's some change to the UI that results. Those changes to the UI will be the subject of our next screencast.